started being all kind of barky. Like, whoa! <laughs> I never heard that from her before. Really? <laughs> that was the first. First little barking episode. You found out you're loud, huh? Hey, what's that piece of wood there, man? Did you do? Is that from the uh, Australia? This one is from the Outback. Yeah, it looks like that kind of wood. Yeah. What, do you, what do you call the wood? Eucalyptus. No kidding. Wow. Solid by termites. Hmm. Uh, hmm. So your name is what? Samuel. Samuel, like uh, Samuel the prophet. I read about him. You got brothers and sisters? One brother. One older brother named Andrew. Oh. What's up with your folks? You like your folks? I like my folks, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I call them every other day. Uh huh. Do they kick your butt? No. I can't get duty to kick mine. No. <laughs> and I think I need it. Would you mind kicking my ass for me? Me? Uh, nothing. You blow your didgeridoo on my ass? Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the deal, man? You can heal somebody. What's the what kind of ailments? Um. Well. From from what I've read, uh, sound sound vibration actually penetrates the the cells, like the, the molecules of your body, because sound sound is able to go through solid mm -hmm. solid objects. Like uh, if you're standing on one side of a wall and I play this on the other side, you can hear it. Mm -hmm. It's because the sound vibration is actually traveling through the wall. Now, when I point this at someone, it travels through their body and vibrates the actual molecules of, of, the, of the body mm -hmm. um, and as far as as far as healing it's all it's all on intention I believe all I put is positive the people usually positive. say oh this is killing me it has hurts or that hurts and, and I can kind of just zero in on the spot huh yeah for sure I can actually uh, it's a little different with this one you have a um, bunch of different tones for different situations? Well, each chakra has its own tone, actually, huh. and every person has their own vibration. Do body. you line up on a person's back at the chakra's points or something? Yep, hmm. uh, and depending on how the, it, it works best um, in, the, in the mind, because the mind is what controls the physical, and if the mind is, hmm. is relaxed, then the sound vibration can better better penetrate whatever it is is uh, troubling the mind. So you can really just put that right on somebody's skull and... and feel their... Well, huh. I actually feel it in my lips. When I mm. point it at someone, it, the sound actually changes. Huh. Um, and when I point it at uh, each chakra, changes to a different tone according to how that person's mm -hmm. individual chakra is vibrating. You know the, the Marjo, the, the kid faith healer that went around in all the tents around the country and healed the people all over the country? No. Uh -huh. Sounds like you got a little bit of Marjo in you, man. It's a, Me, it's I a just good, do. I'm just a good, kid with a did, you know? A kid with a did. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the first time someone asked me to point it at them, hey, will you point that at me? I, I had to stop because of how how the vibration from the person comes up through the tube and hits you in the hmm. throat and, and it like changes the sound and I was like whoa what was that you huh. know and uh I guess they had 10,000 horns at uh, Jericho and they hit high C or something like when the glass breaks when the opera singers ah the <laughs> crack I think that's you know, we ought to do a movie, 10,000 Digis. Yeah. <laughs> Digi kiss. Cool. There you go. Digi yeah, it kiss. sounds like the same thing that I was reading about that dolphins do. Hmm. Yeah. It sounds like the same, the same kind of thing. Whales do, too. Yeah. Apparently they have uh, some things now where they take autistic children yeah. and stuff out. And yeah, I was just reading a book. The whales and hmm. uh, the sonar from the whale could actually spin their body in the water. As the whales pump pump sonar at them, uh, their bodies will actually spin and rotate in the ocean. So the sound is such a powerful thing because it's just pure vibration. Um, we just happen to be at, it just happens to be at a frequency that we can pick up with our ears. You know? Think you can heal insanity with this thing? We we can all only heal ourselves, I believe. Uh, through faith, having faith that we can be healed, not, not
not fearing, oh, I have an illness, thinking my body's got me covered. I have faith that, that I'm human and I'm supposed to be here. How'd you end up in Shasta City here? Um, hitchhike. <laughs> but uh, did you get a calling or a message or just somebody said, hey, get out and you were here? <laughs> I've been traveling for a long time and I passed by. Where'd you start out? Pennsylvania. Huh? Pittsburgh. And, uh, Got a bit of an Amish look. <laughs> what are you looking for? Um, not really looking for anything. Just cruising, you know? Uh, here and I, I love this place. I've been coming back for years. What's some of the best jams you got into with that didgeridoo? <laughs> That's the best part about carrying it. Berkeley, mm -hmm. where, are, where else have you been to for the? St. Louis, I've got to play with some kids that are like the next Beatles. Uh -huh. where, where are they at? St. Louis, Missouri. Where? Um, exactly. Where exactly? Where, where if I go there, how do I find I them? Know. <laughs> I'm looking for the new Beatle band. Great, they had a stand-up bass. Uh, we got to jam with that. That was cool. You got their email? Nope, no contact. It was just Can you tell me what you what know? corner they're on? What part of town? Um, go to what's the name of the coffee shop? Uh, the gooey butter cake. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Well, you've been traveling, man. Cake. I want to hear about the hot chicks. They have gooey butter cake. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Did you ever find anybody that, that even came close to feeling like a, a good reflection for you as a female? Yep. So you got a ditch, too? <laughs> no? Is she a singer? Um, My girlfriend, she's a singer. Actually... You know what? She does have a dig. She's learning how to play it. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. But I gotta ask you some more qu more personal questions. <laughs> <laughs> you doing a documentary? Yeah. yeah. Right on. Yeah. We're we're uh, doing the travel log of the Sojourners of the Universe. We're trying to kick back through Facebook and their Weebly.com site, Sojourners of the Universe. Now if you can figure out how to spell Sojourners, you got a chance of getting to the site. <laughs> yeah, it's been slow going so far, but it seems like this whole summer has just been like, you know... Judy's more. like been blown away with the wind so many times. This is the first time I really got to catch up with her. Right. She went down south for a month, and I tried to, to to fly and drop in on her in Sausalito, and I just couldn't, couldn't quite make the connection. It's like, yeah. once she's gone, it's like, whoopee! Caught up with me last night. Nice. <laughs> right yeah. And up to Ashland, here we go. On to Ashland, yeah. yeah. What's the name of that festival there? The Prana Festival. Prana Festival. I seen Prana written on the wall somewhere here. Yeah, on the wall over here. Yeah, I hear that's the festival to be at if I'm going to go to one. So I've never been. So. I see your your name's what? Samuel. Samuel. Yeah. I got to hang out with the Hari Krishnas in Isla Vista in '77. Uh, nice. Like they have the Sunday love feast. And it'd be drumming and shit, and some some reading from the scriptures, and then you ask them a question, and they could pull out a scripture, like 35 books of some story where Krishna went through a similar oh, situation. Yeah. And so anyway, that was like the only thing that was going on for me there. So one, I went to that door of that apartment every morning for a week and knocked on the door. And when it got to be Sunday, the cat's going, "Was anybody have anything on their minds or something? They questions about?" It? I said, "Well, you know." I kind of dig you guys the scene, and I really wish somebody was here every day, and I could get down here and do the the job of meditation and stuff, and get more more into the philosophy. He says, "Well, oh, he goes, he's shaking his head and just started like he was like had these tears of joy coming out of every pore of his body, jumped up and started started dancing." He says, "Well, Krishna sure heard you knocking, because six different colored saffron robes come out of the back room, and it was the back of the Godhead magazine." staff editors were staying there for six months or they were the heads of the co seven continents something like that wow. so yeah it was right a pretty on. good immersion there but this relating to the idea of exciting the molecules with your dig is like the chanting. ohm i'm telling chanting is the same. what the chanting yes the ohm is the same as the 
Judy's got the word Ohm in the middle of her last name. Yeah, right on. Um, I was just at a Krishna temple in Florida, actually, about hmm. three, three weeks ago. Gainesville? Uh, it was... North Panhandle, yeah, Gainesville. Mm -hmm. With a woman named Harinam. Yeah, my, uh, my XXX took my kids there for five years. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, they ended up at the West Virginia Temple, the uh, New Vrindavana. Uh, it's a pretty neat place, Moundsville, West Virginia. I know Moundsville, I'm from Pennsylvania. So yeah. Pittsburgh, so. I got a buddy in, uh, well, my college roommate, John Kasich, was from McKeeves Rock. <laughs> He's the governor of Ohio now. Yeah. The woman, Hari Nam, that I met was very, uh, very knowledgeable. It was, I was only there, I was there with a friend, and sat and spoke with her for three or four hours, and, and it was a very eye-opening experience. She was a student of Prabhupada. Yeah. Um, I went to Ohio State in 70, and my English teaching instructor was a guy named Wheeler, and he had the shaved head, but he wore uh, blue jeans, a white t-shirt, white wool socks, and Converse tennis shoes, just like me, except I, I was letting my hair grow. <laughs> so everybody knew this dude was a Krishna. So one day he stops the class five minutes before the end. He says, "Do you mind if we just close our books and could I please talk to you for a couple minutes about vegetarianism?" <coughs> now he's talking about all the petrochemicals and stuff they use on the fields and sterilizing the field with the radiation and and then. Uh, pesticides and then the herbicides but they got all this shit going on all the thousands of poisons and here's all these uh, steak and potato people sitting there listening you know Ohio the Corn Belt and Ed's got it through the wisecrack and says well you got any idea what they use for fertilizer on the, the vegetables you know I mean I was just saying like shit you know cow shit manure and I had no, I didn't even know what chemicals, fertilizers were then. But anyway, everybody was so tense that this guy's going to give us this lecture about vegetarian and eating meat and stuff, animals, and everybody cracked up. It was just raucous, roaring laughter. And the bell rang, and everybody got up and left. And, and Wheeler's sitting on the front of the desk, and his head just sunk down like that. And the fucking echo from that laughter, it kind of was a bit of scorn, but it was a bit of relief. and. It's this this vibration just bounced back and forth, back and forth, and finally it just set on me so hard I could not face that guy again. Yeah. Well, this is the trippy part about it. He went to India to try and find a guru, and he spent a year there traveling all over, and he came back to New York. He didn't find a guru. So two days back, he's walking down the street, and there's Prabhupada on the other side of the street, and he runs over and gets on his knees and says, Swami, is there anything I can do for you? And he says, well, I, I'm looking for a place for a, a, a you know, a love feast, temp a temple that I could stay there, and, and we can have a daily uh, readings and, and chanting and stuff. So he hooks him up and gets going, and he's like this linguistic uh, major at Ohio State, and he was left in charge of completing the translations of the Bhagavatams when Prabhupada died. Why? <laughs> uh, yeah, so a bit of a trippy the connection. Uh, the Gita is forever in my mind. Yeah, the uh, Hayagriva, that's what his name became when he got to the West Virginia. And really weird, I went to visit Eartha and uh, my kids uh, Jalila and Ram and uh, Wheeler Hayagriva had died two months before I got there. Uh -huh. I didn't get to see him then, but they built this gigantic uh, metal obelisk that they've kept the, the peacocks in. Yeah. And it, 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 Hayagriva meant the, the bird keeper. Yeah. So they had this big black alabaster monument out where they buried him next to the, the peacock thing. Prabhupada. I see him as a gardener. I see us all as like young sprouts that have all been transplanted from other countries 
long time ago. And we're over here trying to get rooted and grow, grow a new garden. I was trying to decide whether that was a tree root on your thing or if that was a tree stock. I think of it as a nerve ending. Mm. Yeah, there you go. It's okay, that makes sense. <laughs> it has become part of me. I did that with a magnifying glass. Really? Beautiful, well, I think we dig you, man. <laughs> Good work you're doing. Thank you. Uh, the work, I, I don't try to seek it, you know. I let it find me. Uh, you know, and it's interesting you're here. You're not going up to the Ashland thing, huh? You got a place no, to stay here? I, I stay in the woods. Mm -hmm. um, I don't do the festival thing. It's, uh, Not for me. Yeah, I, more, this I got a really bad cut on my leg jumping the fence up at Quincy one time getting into the reggae festival. Yeah. I mean, literally got the thing, both pins on the top of the fence stuck in my leg and I was hanging from it. Wow. It was a bad time, but I was tripping and I laughed about it at the time, but in the next couple of weeks it fucking hurt. Yeah. This yeah. is more of my vibe. Yeah, you know? it's pretty mellow. Well, I don't know how long you've been in Shasta. Uh, just 